What's up YouTube? It's Mike here back with another video. A lot of people know my channel because of the plywood tanks and they have been very successful but there are some pros and cons and I've had a couple of problems recently that I wanted to talk about so we're going to get into those issues today and I think they're good especially if you're interested in building a plywood tank. You really should see this stuff as it progresses, I've got one tank that's been running over two years and I've got another tank that's been running about a year now. So uh, we can see how they age. And that's one of the biggest things with the plywood tanks is how well they're gonna age, how long the tank is gonna last. So um, we're gonna get into some of the issues I've been having today. Before we get into it, I ask you to please subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell for notifications. And if you like the video, please like the video. Well, the, uh, the plywood tank has been pretty reliable over the past two years. It's actually been running with water in it and fish for over two years now. But last night I noticed something. This guy right here has been chewing on some of the epoxy. And if you look here, and you're gonna get to see it better, but once he gets out of there, see how that flaps open there? So I did a bridge, maybe you can see it, down the whole bottom of the glass and all around the sides. And for the most part, that bridge is still really well intact. And you're not gonna be able to see it too well over here. But I got a good overlap of epoxy onto the glass over the silicone, which was kind of like a double seal that was my uh, take on it. But the tank was actually sealed before adding this extra few coats around the glass and over the silicone. So technically, even though this is peeling off, I think the tank is going to stay sealed just fine. Look at this guy, he's splashing me now. But um, I don't want it flapping there. It could potentially lead to problems in the future, so I'm gonna lower the water level a good amount, and then I'll turn off the pumps once I'm in there, and I'm gonna cut that strip that's flapping out as an attempt to not let it get any worse. And last night I put my leak alarm there just cause you know, obviously I'm worried about it. So far so good. In theory, it shouldn't matter, but you never know. I'd hate for that to somehow peel back some of the original ceiling of the tank. So for, for those of you who don't know, I did um, nine coats of epoxy on this tank. The first six were before I installed the glass. So even where the glass sits on is all epoxied and the whole thing was sealed. And then after I installed the glass, I did another three coats over the entire tank, which I also bridged the epoxy onto the glass with. So it worked for a while, however, um, it did take a lot of wear and tear because this is what he does constantly. So I think he chewed on it until it finally broke free. Very unfortunate. Hopefully he doesn't continue to do that. Um, but also, hopefully it's not really a big deal. Hopefully long term it doesn't have any bad effects on the tank. I still don't like to see it though. Okay, drain the tank down. I'm going to jump in.
can see the um, the Herdco rubberized pond liner. It really does make a very nice liner. And like I said, this was only three coats. So you imagine what how thick my nine or ten coats were. It's crazy to think about. But um, yeah, stuff is great and it's super durable. See, the thing about Pond Armor and even the uh, Inner Seal 670HS that I use is it's brittle. So when it flakes off, it just cracks, which is not ideal where this is just so, and it was actually very difficult to cut with a knife too. So I just got rid of as much excess as I could. And unfortunately it's not a clean cut down there. It's just so hard to cut. I think I got a piece there too. But hopefully that um, avoids it getting worse over time. Good news is I can see the, you can't really see it on camera, but I can see the seal on the glass and that all looks great. So I think we're okay. It is unfortunate though. I liked, I liked knowing that I had the extra seal before and now we don't. So I used a rubberized membrane type epoxy, uh, neoprene based epoxy made by Hurtco for the 1100. And again, it's been pretty successful other than that one issue. But I used a different epoxy for the 1500 and I'm starting to have a different issue with it. So I started noticing little chips of epoxy in the substrate. And I pulled one out and you see it's very, very thin. That is one coat max. That's about a hair thin. So that's definitely just one coat of epoxy that seems to be coming off. So the very last coat in certain places seems to be coming off. And I noticed specifically that the rays have been chewing on the epoxy and it, you might not be able to see it on camera but right here there's like um, yeah it's gonna focus on my finger it's very difficult to show you guys on camera but basically I can see where a sheet or a small section of epoxy the last coat that I put on is peeling off and I believe it's because the rays have been chewing on it However, it may not have cured properly in the first place. So it's getting quite annoying picking out these little chunks of epoxy. And they're harmless to the fish, so it's not too big of a deal there, but it is ugly. And I would rather the tank not peel. So you're probably thinking, well, the thing's gonna leak, right? I don't believe that it is because I did 10 coats and the epoxy is really thick. So not only did I do 10 coats of the epoxy itself on the 1500, but I fiberglassed the entire thing. So not only did I fiberglass the entire tank, but in this particular section where it is peeling, we are double fiberglassed. So we have a seam for all the corners and then we have one big sheet that came down over that seam. So we have double layers, actually triple layer of fiberglass resin and then we have 10 coats of epoxy. So one layer of epoxy coming off is not a big deal. And again, I wanted to show you guys how thin that is. That's how I know it really is just one layer. And I saved these from when I drilled my holes out from my plumbing. So this is the back wall of the tank. And now these are pretty high up. These are over two foot up off the, the uh, bottom of the tank. So the thickest part is on the th the seams here. The, the thickest part of the whole epoxy and fiberglass is on the seams where it's peeling. But this is from the wall itself. And just so you guys can get an idea how thick that is, you can see the layer of fiberglass and then you have even a thicker layer of epoxy there. So it gives you guys an idea of why I'm not too, too worried. So if you were to slap that on top, it might be one or two coats. I think it's just one because it is so, so thin. Um, but I'm not too worried about it yet. We will see how it goes as time goes on. 
Um, I attempted to put some small rocks that I had lying around in front of it to deter them from chewing on it because the rays seem to love to chew on the epoxy. Real pain in the butt. And I also noticed that all the chunks seem to make their way over here. It's probably a flow thing. Um, but now I'm starting to get worried to see if they're doing it in other places. I'm not seeing any places other than that one that are peeling. However, I really wouldn't know without getting in the tank, draining it, and really inspecting, which I can't do. So for now, um, I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm just going to pick epoxy out, epoxy chunks out. And what I am going to do is I'm going to get some bigger rocks that none of the fish can move and put them in front of that spot to try to keep that from peeling any further. That's the goal. So I just don't want it to get worse over time. If I can avoid it, great. And there's not much I can do about the rays chewing on it. So something to keep in mind, if you're going to build a plywood tank, that rays, stingrays, might not be the best option. Although I don't want to blame the rays completely as I don't know if this is epoxy failure from the last coat putting on. Maybe it just did not cure right, like I was saying before, or if the rays are legit chewing on it. But rays are chewers. They are chewing on that spot. So I don't know if they're the cause or if they're just making it worse. Regardless, something to think about if you guys plan on building a tank. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope that it was informative. I know a lot of you guys follow me because of the plywood tanks. You guys either have built one um, or you want to build another one or uh, you want to build your first one. So I try to uh, show you guys the good and the bad of the plywood tanks and I'll keep you guys updated as time goes on of you know how these obviously fare. Hopefully I can get 10 years out of it. I'm very happy with the 1100 so far. We are two years in, the two years flew by, and uh, really minimal issues. The flap in the front has not been too big of a deal, luckily. Um, it's not causing any kind of leak or anything with the way the tank was built, it didn't matter. But still, you don't like to see it, so. Um, regardless, uh, I hope you guys learned something. We'll stay up to date on it. I'll keep you guys updated as the progress goes on. But I ask you again to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell for notifications. If you like the video, like the video. And follow me on Instagram at Off the Deep End Aquatics. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.